Stonecutter's Canvas with Roger Hopkins. Before we take a close look at granite, it's important to understand a little bit about rocks in general. Rocks are classified into three types, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. The origin of these words provides insight as to how each type was formed. Igneous is Latin for fire. Sedimentary is Latin for settle. Metamorphic is Greek for change. With a skilled hand, the right tools, and patience, rocks can be transformed into anything a person imagines. Rocks are not stable. One form of rock turns into another and then another. This process never stops. This process is called the rock cycle. Igneous rocks are formed by magma. Magma is heated by the core of the earth, which is 8,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This heats up the minerals and they head toward the surface of the earth. If they reach the surface and are spewed by a volcano, they are called lava. If the minerals do not reach the surface, they cool inside the earth and form rocks such as granite. Sedimentary rocks are formed by the erosion of rocks. Erosion occurs due to wind, rain, and other weather conditions. Slowly, all rocks wear away. These rock particles are deposited in the rivers, lakes, and oceans of the Earth. The Earth's plates are moving slowly. Eventually, two plates crash into each other. Tremendous heat and pressure cause the minerals to change. This results in metamorphic rocks. This gigantic amount of pressure causes mountains to form at the site of the collision. The United States contains all three types of rocks. Here we see that the majority of the United States is sedimentary rock. This provides proof that at one time the United States was underwater. Metamorphic rocks are located in mountainous regions. Remember that this type of rock is formed when two plates crash into one another, causing mountains to form. Igneous rocks also appear near mountain ranges. The largest area is located in the northwest. Notice that there is another region along the northeast coastline. This includes eastern Massachusetts. Let's visit Fletcher Quarry now with Roger Hopkins in Massachusetts. This quarry behind me has been in operation since 1881. And the deposit of granite here extends, oh, probably two or three miles down into the earth and covers an area of uh, 40 square miles or more. Granite is used for a lot of different things, everything from kitchen countertops to uh, steps, siding on buildings. You'll see a lot of monuments made out of granite, benches, sidewalk paving. Granite is one of the hardest stones, but that poses the problem of how do we cut this stone. Well, you have to use a substance that is harder than granite. By using diamond saws, they're able to saw through the stone without ruining the blades. Granites are made up of three major elements, feldspar, mica, and quartz. The color variation in the various granites is due to the mineral content, the chemical composition of the stone. If there is more iron in the stone, it'll have a different color. As you can see here, this is a stone here off from the coast of Maine. It has a lot of purple in it. And this stone from the Dakotas has got uh, a lot of red, pinkish color in it. Let's visit the Underwood School in Newton, Mass. It was the site of an unusual recycling project involving granite blocks from the old Newton Free Library. After the library building was torn down, chunks of granite were brought to the school where Roger Hopkins and his crew used them to decorate the new playground. Some pieces were used for benches and planters, and some chunks were sculpted into blocks that looked like alphabet blocks. Roger and his crew used powerful air hammers and chisels to cut the letters right out of the rock. Sometimes they used a giant blowtorch to smooth the surface of the stone. Whatever you do, don't try this at home. The 
the blocks were decorated with letters and symbols from around the world. This one says peace in Chinese characters. This one is an ancient Celtic symbol from Ireland. Nobody's too sure what this one means. What do you think? Since granite is one of the hardest stones on earth, it is likely that these blocks will probably be here for hundreds and hundreds of years. By watching and talking with Roger, the kids at Underwood learn lots of things about granite and how an artist can turn a chunk of stone to something really cool.